I guess for the younger years, you're probably looking at a lot of competing deadlines as opposed to one massive deadline. And I think that's a little bit different. So I don't know if you guys have any other tips around that kind of side of the earlier stages. Yeah, I actually think that's a very good point. And that can happen, doesn't it? When you start answering questions, you kind of relate it back to your own experience. Mm. Um, I, you know, I, I, I kind of empathize. I really empathize with, you know, multiple assignments happening at the one time because I am the one task horse. So I don't, I mean, there, I, I, I don't necessarily really have any um, advice about that. I know, for example, even working with the students, that some of them can manage a couple of assignments at the one time. Whereas for me personally, I can only work on one assignment, finish it. So I don't, um, I don't really have any guidance on that regard. I think it kind of does come back to your point, which is whatever works for you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But, but I guess um, how you organize or manage your time is really going to, to help in that regard. Uh -huh. um, I think that it's a tough one when there is competing assignments and I know students generally often struggle with it and it's important not to focus on one sign assignment over another because they might be just weighted the exact same for those specific modules. I suppose going back into the time management and when you're allocating time as to what you're doing with it, maybe if, it, if there is two or three assignments maybe, or say two assignments, maybe allocating the mornings to work on one and allocating the afternoons to work on the other, but it is hard to do that. But if you're going to focus on one totally, then it's important to make sure that there is enough time for the other one. So really starting early is a huge part of it and having that, that diary up to date so that you know yeah. that they're all coming in at the one time. Like I would be like Mirren, I definitely would like to focus on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. And if if you lean in that way to something, then it's really important that you don't delay starting, that you have your diary, that you know they're all coming in. And if you're allocating a week to each thing, then that you get that document more or less finished within that week and then make sure that the same amount of time is allocated for the next one. You have mm -hmm. to be and it's easy mm -hmm. to get carried away with not. Yeah. Um, I think if you're struggling to get over the line with one mm -hmm. of them, sometimes it's a case that stepping back from yeah. that topic area just for a brief time, the other topic mm -hmm. might be a bit of a distraction that you can yeah. just organize sources for it that can be helpful but I wouldn't you know so again it's what works it's what works for you it's finding out how do I do this and what's the best way and how mm. do I manage this along with whatever else is going on like a lot of undergraduate students might be doing their courses full-time mm. then many others might be coming through lifelong learning and they're not just doing it full-time well they're technically doing it full-time but they're doing it alongside work and full time and managing mm -hmm. a lot of other stuff. So it's a really important that you don't sort of lose sight of that. You don't want to lose marks for something. Um, and it's not easy to do. Like I I, yeah. I definitely agree with Mirren on I am definitely one thing at a time. And but yeah. I have to be really careful as part of that process that I leave enough time for mm -hmm. the other so that that work doesn't suffer. Mm -hmm. And I guess finding points. out, sorry, go on. No, they're very good points. Yeah, I think finding out, like you say, if you are going to break up your day, maybe make sure that it's that you kind of pair two assignments together that are a bit different. Like if yeah. one's a presentation or one's group work and then a written assignment, it's a little bit easier to move between those two, I think, than yeah. two big written assignments where you're kind of, you know, or, or but that might be for, might be different for someone else. I think, no, I want to stay in this kind of writing mode. 
I'll do the presentation on its own at the end. Or so it is. It's about it's, it, there's a lot of trial and error. But I think the two things are check in with yourself. Are you just doing busy work? Are you spending an hour just organizing your folders because you want to because you don't want to face the fact that you have so much to do? You know, are you procrastinating? Are you are you overwhelmed to the point that you're ignoring it at all? As long as you're doing something, you'll you'll be building the skills and you'll be bringing it all together. But checking in like, is this actually useful? Do I need yeah. to read this 10th article before I start writing? Yeah. You know, so and breaking it down, breaking it down into small tasks, whatever it might be. Be. Um, um yeah so there's no unfortunately there's no right or wrong but it's just make sure you're focusing I suppose and checking and, in with yourself and actually just in relation to that I am thinking to myself the other thing that I have noticed is if there's a task that I absolutely hate i.e reference lists what I did was I would uh in that regard um I would kind of allocate an hour every day to get my reference list done, you know, um, so that that was also a thing. So it wasn't I'm just thinking about it now, you know, coming up to the end, there was it wasn't necessarily that I was just writing one thing, you know, so I was I also like I had to do a presentation and an article and stuff. So, yes, within the day, I might have the morning redraft in a chapter, maybe an hour doing a PowerPoint presentation and then an hour doing the reference list. But it was all about very very clear timetables because otherwise I'd, I'd 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 still wouldn't have that reference list done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's different, I suppose, approaches to that. Some people say, do that. What's that? Eat the frog. You do the hard thing first. Yeah. And you leave the, you know, like you leave the stuff that maybe comes more naturally to when you're when you're at a point where you're probably more stressed and have less time. Maybe that's just. But yeah, again, it, it maybe just do tip away at the hard stuff a bit at a time. So yeah. it's about yeah, it's about trial and error. Um, it, it can be useful mm -hmm. to with the reference list as well, even allocating that time. But I have found, too, that I encourage students and I use this approach myself when I'm doing assignments um, for courses that I have done. Uh, literally having my assignment and then having a separate document for the reference list and oh, yeah, yeah. do my references as I write. So if I yeah. use citation, well, then I I format the reference in Harvard or APA at yeah. the same time because we're tired at the end of a doc of presenting a piece of work and you don't yeah. see the errors like even when I went back and after I'd submitted my PhD and and looked at it or even if mm -hmm. I've looked at assignments mm -hmm. I, I have submitted and then I've come mm -hmm. away and my god I never even noticed that oh, error that mistake because you become so engaged with it you actually don't see the errors you know mm -hmm. so that's what I suppose it's important particularly with college work that try if you can get it finished a day or two beforehand and then have a read with a gap of a day yes. you might see other errors that you know you wouldn't have noticed after work and weeks mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. need those fresh eyes. I think um, fresh eyes, fresh eyes is it. If you have yeah. the if you have the luxury of um yeah. after you finally finished it and you can leave it to read it with fresh eyes, um, it is so helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Um 